Hey everyone, Wazoo here, and in this episode we are going to go through a process of creating a main window and main game loop using the new and updated SDL3 library. Well, technically it is the SDL 3.1.0 preview library. I thought I would get the release notes in front of you at the start of this video just to communicate what we'll be working on today. Yeah, I think this is going to be pretty cool. On this channel, I've covered many types of game samples using technologies such as Raylib and even SDL2. I've got a few videos. And so now with the upcoming release of SDL3, I thought I would give it a little bit of quality time and see what kind of changes we can make use of. So as I said, we'll be using the 3.1.0 preview, which is not expected to change very much before the initial release release, the legit re release of three of the SDL3 toolkit. I believe uh, there was an AMA on Reddit between uh, Sam Lantigua and 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 Iculus. I, I can't remember what his name was. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, where they discussed uh, everything about SDL3. So I, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. I encourage you to scan through some of the comments and questions. There were some good ones there. Or the, the feeling I got from it is that there weren't any major changes expected between now and the release of 3.2.0, which is what they'll be tagging as the official three point or the official three release, I guess. I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but let's just go with it, whatever. They've got their reasons and I'm sure they're very smart people and they've figured out a path to get this stuff out the door. Okay, anyways. So there are quite a few differences between SDL2 and SDL3 as a lot of the uh, upcoming documentation and I'm sure videos around the internet will start to uh, clarify and circulate and highlight. But the one I wanted to just talk about is the main function because that's kind of the first step into using SDL. And so in this in these preview notes, uh, we can pretty much ignore just about everything here until we get to this one here. The handling of main has been moved to a header library and an optional callback based program flow is available. So in this video, we won't be going through the callback based approach, but we'll be going through just the regular creation of a SDL3 window and renderer using the C programming language and of course SDL 3.1.0 preview. I wonder how many more times I can say that. Okay, so let's jump into Visual Studio. Okay, so as you can see, I've got Visual Studio open in front of us. I've got a basic console app template started up. I renamed the generated CPP file to just main.c, and I've set up a linker and header paths to the SDL3 preview zip folder that I downloaded from the GitHub repository. So here we go. So here we are in our main Whoops, here in our main program. And the first thing we need to do is to include the SDL3 slash SDL.h. And that's pretty much standard. That's the same way you kind of include SDL2 and even the original SDL. And then the other change that we're going to need to make based on the updates between two and three is we're going to need to include SDL3 slash SDL main.h. And that gives us the access to the same uh, main entry point that we used to we used to need to use the SDL2 main linking library for. So we're going to just fill this in. We've got our int main function with int argc and char star argv. This all looks incredibly familiar and very identical to so far to what we do in an SDL2 program. All right, so now we're going to declare a window. So SDL window. Okay, and then we are going to use SDL init. And SDL init has also changed just slightly from the previous version of SDL2. 
So if we say here int result equals SDL in it, and you'll see here in the, uh, oh, it won't show because my hover text is just way too big. But basically they've removed the SDL underscore in it underscore everything, which is what everyone, well, every almost every tutorial used to use online for initializing SDL2. So now we will explicitly with SDL underscore in it underscore video and SDL underscore in it underscore events. Perfect. Okay, now if result is less than zero, then we can use the SDL log and just say uh, SDL in it error and then a percent s and then we can call sdl underscore get error to display the error in our to our sdl log and i'll show you in a minute how that comes out and let's throw in a return minus one all right okay and then so let's initialize our window with create window sdl underscore create window and whoa that's so massive okay so we're going to be using uh, the, the parameter, the input parameters have changed slightly where we are de declaring a string for the title, a width and a height, and some window flags flags. So let's just call this STL3, hello world. Okay, I'm going to have to ah, go away. Okay. Uh, and then let's just call it a 800 by 600 video or window, sorry, and then just zero for the flags, for the, the window render flags. Okay, so then if window is equal to null, then steal log, and then let's return minus two. And then let's do the same thing with the renderer. The renderer equals stl underscore create renderer create renderer uh, we give it the window and again this this not again but notice the first time that this is now also slightly different from the sdl2 renderer initialization uh, if you recall or if you might be used to sdl2 would initialize with create renderer of the window the pointer to the window and then a minus one where for the second argument instead of the the const char name so let's just and it says here in here in the notes if you don't need a specific renderer specify null and stl will attempt to choose the best option for you based on what's available on the user system that sounds like a good choice to me all right so let's just call this one Oh, we've already created the, the window title. I'm sorry. So let's just pass in the window pointer and then null for the second argument. And then for flags, we're going to be using SDL renderer accelerated and SDL renderer present vsync, which we've also used many, many times in previous SDL2 initialization okay and same thing uh, let's just cut and paste this just to keep this moving a little all right so if renderer equals null then we just display the error that we're getting from create renderer and return minus three okay now we go into our main loop and it is identical to the main loops that you've done in sdl2 some minor things have changed, but the majority, the concept is pretty much still the same. We declare a SDL event. And I'm just going to assign a variable to, for quitting. And so while not quit, uh, we do the while SDL poll event. And we store, we pass in the event. We do a switch on the type event type okay now one minor change from sdl2 is that 
the case for quitting is not just SDL underscore quit. It is case SDL underscore event underscore quit. So massive changes there. And let's just spit out a log saying SDL3 event quit. Quit equals one and break. Okay. And then what we're going to do is uh, just before we get into the main event loop, let's just, in order to demonstrate the output of SDL log, let's just say, okay, SDL3 initialized. Something really simple like that. Okay. And then after the main loop, let's do uh, SDL log, SDL3 shutdown. Okay. And what we're going to do is call SDL underscore destroy renderer and pass it the renderer and then SDL destroy window and pass it the window and then SDL quit. So all that is the same. That hasn't changed. So back in our main while loop here. So we finished with this uh, while loop through the poll event. And now let's just SDL set render draw color. And we'll pass in the renderer and then just zero, zero. We just want a blue, a blue background clear. We want to clear the renderer to blue and then SDL underscore render clear. And then our render, we pass in our render object. And then finally SDL underscore render, render present, and then the render. And then one habit that everyone was getting used to with SDL2 was then calling SDL underscore delay of one in order to just give control back to the host operating system in case it needed to do anything. And I haven't seen anything yet that signifies that we need to get rid of this, that it's already handled for us in SDL3, but I will keep doing some more digging and let's go ahead and run this sucker. Okay, and we should see a, a blue window here and notice in our console uh, output, we've got an info log statement saying SDL3 initialized. Now, if we close it with, if we close the window with the X, then we get a SDL event quit message and then shut down. Pretty cool. So what we're also gonna do is we're gonna add in support for just hitting the escape key. So after this SDL underscore event underscore quit, we are going to add a new, a new event handler for SDL underscore event underscore key underscore down. If we press the escape key, then it'll be detected and it will call the same quit shutdown functionality. So if event dot key dot key sim dot sim equals SDL key escape. So this stuff is the same. SDL log, um, SDL three, escape key, quit. And then quit equals one. And let's try this out. So again, we get our main blue window to, is this 800 by 600? I think that's what I set it to. All right. 800 by 600. And we see here the info log message of SDL3 initialized. Pretty cool. And then if we hit escape, it shuts down. And then we see the log message output saying, you know, we've detected the escape key quit and SDL3 shut down. So we can start up our main window and shut it down with either the escape key or closing the window as you would expect to close it on any modern operating system by using the X button. <laughs> X icon button, whatever the heck that is. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. It was a quick and dirty in what needs to be updated in an app to make use of SDL3. Of course, this is only uh, dipping our toe into the SDL3 iceberg. Once we start investigating and going through deep diving a lot of the changes and enhancements that have been put into SDL3, I think, uh, well, I'm look, definitely looking forward to it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think it's going to really be cool. 
They've talked about adding a SDL camera, which I think is going to be amazing. I love cameras. That's what I really love the most about Raylib is the use of the camera there. So I'm wondering how close or how different or what, what's possible using the SDL3 camera. So I think that's going to be really cool to explore. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below if there's a particular feature you wanted to see covered for SDL3. I will take a look and see what I can do for the next video in this series about SDL3. All right. Have a great day wherever you are. Peace. Hey everyone. I thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more, please subscribe to this channel. I'm also reading the Bible chapter by chapter over on my other channel, Bible Time with Wazoo. Hope to see you there.